Hmm. Hey, good morning. It's nice to see everybody again. I know it's been a few days since we had a live, so I'm very excited to be doing a conservation coffee this morning with you. I am now in Bucharest, Romania, and coming to you live. So I'm very excited today. Thought we could start the day off with some really great news and talk about some of the positive strides that are being made in conservation. And it's always the best way to start the day off by talking about these things. Uh, hopefully everybody has their mug. As you can see, I'm showing off mine. Um, and uh, if you do want one of these, you can go to my website, ericycrown.com, and grab one. All the money that's, uh, that comes in from it goes to help uh, my work in the field. So let's see. All right, the video is now live. So here we go. Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to talk about an aspect of conservation that we don't ever really think much about which is space debris. It's bad enough that we have so much debris on land and in the water, but we've actually also clogged up space. <laughs> if, if you didn't even think that's possible. So today we're gonna to talk about an amazingly ingenuitive way to combat space debris. But first, let's go ahead and start the show off. Remember, it's our world, let's talk about it. All right, that's the new nifty little uh, new intro. And tell me what you think about that. So today, let's go ahead and talk about what's happening out in space. Now, for me, it's a very uh, uh, a very personal topic because uh, I don't know many of you may or may not know, but one of my relatives is actually uh, Neil Armstrong, the first man to take a stroll out on the moon. So my family has always been very involved in space work, space um, programs. Uh, on an unfortunate side note, <clears throat> um, the space shuttle Challenger blew up on my 13th birthday, January 28th, uh, 1986, I believe. So let's see who we have here today. We have, oh, somebody says, hi, good morning. Hey, Grand Rising. It's nice to see everybody on here. Good morning. Hey, Mitch. Thanks for being on today. Hmm. Let me let me know if you guys prefer coffee or tea. Speaking of which, before we get too far into space debris, this Saturday, we have a special guest that's going to be on, and we're going to talk about conscious coffee and how one program in Africa is growing coffee through a poacher reform program and also helping out the environment and a lot of other really good causes. So coffee, it can always be a little bit of a tricky subject. We're going to talk about coffee since we always talk about coffee. We have coffee, coffee mugs, and everything else. Today, I'm actually having a smoothie due to the time that we're out here. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump right in today. Very exciting topic. Now, I was really surprised to learn there are so much space junk. There is over 5,000 satellites in space. Uh, there is, is so much. And if you look at this, this graphic right here, there's over 5,500 tons of space junk. And the space chunk comes in, junk comes in different sizes. So if you can imagine the world as it's surrounded, here we go, this is a nice thing. Now th this image on the left is actually an image that was a CGI that was created by NASA to show the coverage of all the space junk that is revolving around. And this does include satellites, but it also includes uh, rockets that burn off once they get to space. It includes a lot of leftover pieces that are no longer being used. There is an estimated, uh, let's see, actually, let's get rid of that for a second. 128 million pieces of debris. It's crazy. Over 128 million pieces of debris. So uh, now, you know, one thing I, before we continue, I wanted to talk really quickly about everybody always talks about Elon Musk and how Tesla is going to save the world and all these different things. So, you know, for all of the work that he is doing that is positive, I would like to bring up the fact that Elon actually, uh, and with his SpaceX program, which a lot of people are excited about, um, they took out more than uh, 60 internet based satellites. So, what happens is he actually owns about a third of all active satellites in space. So if you think about it, every time he launches a satellite into space, 
we now have a piece of aluminum space junk that we can no longer, um, you know, no, no longer uh, have any way to clean up. And this is a massive issue. Now, the reason that space junk is a problem is because not only is it out there and it's a danger to pilots that are flying out there now to uh, active space shuttles and active space missions, but when it comes back and it re-enters the atmosphere, it actually releases aluminum oxide. Now, the problem is if this aluminum oxide builds up around the, uh, around the world, it's going to actually deplete the ozone layer. And according to the MSDS, uh, the material safety data sheets, it, repeated exposure can lead to lung damage and it can affect the body when it's inhaled and it can also irritate lungs, throat and nose. So if you think about that, we are filling our atmosphere with ozone depleting uh, chemicals that will also cause an issue for our bodies personally. So this is a big, a big problem. So we have to really think about that. Now, what is the way to solve this? Well, this is super cool. Um, Japan is going to launch a wooden satellite. This is just an artist rendition. I'll show you the, excuse me, the actual satellite here in one minute, but a wooden satellite. So what they're doing is the aluminum that encases the satellite instead of it, uh, instead of it being aluminum, instead of it being metal that goes nowhere, that'll turn into aluminum oxide. They're actually planning on using what they're going to call the lingo set. And this is developed in Kyoto University with a few other partners. And you can take a look here. There's actually wood that surrounds the internal guts of the satellite. So what will happen is over time, the satellite will either decompose or it'll burn up upon reentry. So all, all good news, all good news. Um, let's see. Oh, I drink a green shake right now. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm sorry. Usually your names come up. I don't know why it's, it's doing that uh, here today, but good morning. It's nice to see everybody here. And uh, I agree. So much trash left behind on the planet and in the universe. I just, you know, it, it really shocked me when I was reading this, um, how much debris we have and how we have to kind of think about the fact that we always Everything we create, we never think about the after effect of where it's going to go. So this is a really important thing that they're doing with the wooden satellite. A wooden satellite is just the coolest thing I've ever heard of, by the way. It's really um, it's really amazing. Um, let's see. If Elon is so brilliant, why can't he create something to help gather space junk before it returns to the atmosphere? I totally agree. And if there's anybody that can do it, it is Elon Musk. He, he's got a brilliant mind, but he's also <clears throat> focused on making money, uh, not just fully focused on, on saving the world. But, you know, the, the trick is if we can find ways to combine those, then we can really have a positive future because we need businesses, we need innovation, we need things to change, but we need to do things more in concert with nature itself. And always not just think about the immediate use of it, but the after use of it and the afterlife of it. So this is a major um, major issue here. Uh, hey, good morning, Coralie. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Mitch asked about sonic boom impacts. You know, that that's another whole aspect right there. That creates a lot of issues, uh, not only for animals, but for the way that the ozone is. And it, it also causes a lot of other depletion issues. So we really have to consider that. You know, we have so many pieces of space, uh, so many satellites and things that go out into space. But what is happening? And it's crazy. I, I was looking at a map, and if you Google it, you'll see in the 1950s, there was no junk flying around our Earth. Now we actually have a layer of junk, over 128 million pieces ranging in size. But we have all that to contend with. So I just thought it was a very, very great, uh, innovative way. And, and I really do hope that they can continue. Uh, and again, the Kyoto University design. Now, this is by 2023. They're planning on having this satellite up in the air, the Lingo Sat. So this could be the beginning of a brand new approach and a new way to think forward. Because as we've seen in the last hundred years, we've just used the Earth, abused the Earth, without thinking into too much foresight. And now we're finding that we are starting to pay the price, whether it's the air quality, the water quality, uh, animal quality, the environmental quality, and our physical health is also 
being uh, part of taking the toll for business and profit. And if we just have to find a way to combine them. But I wanted to say good morning to everybody and thank you guys for joining. It's great to see everybody. I apologize, I've been a little uh, absent <clears throat> as of recent. And uh, I'm very excited, as you know, Harambe, the documentary is gonna be starting and next week we're gonna be really kicking into gear. I wanna tell everybody about that more as well. But <clears throat> please join me. We're gonna be doing coffees all the time because the idea is, you know, in, in the world of so much negativity and conservation, it's important that we have some positive stories to hold on to. So while you're having your coffee, your green juice, your tea this morning, think about the fact that we're gonna have wooden satellites soon. <laughs> amazing, the world's an amazing place. It's good to see everybody. Let's keep talking about it and I'll see you again.